The ontological argument for the triune god is the most popular video I have released so far. Generally, the feedback has been positive, and even many skeptics have admitted that they cannot find a flaw, but simply choose to be unconvinced. And that is their right. You can get out of the conclusion of any arguments in philosophy if you just bite the bullet and deny one of the premises. The job of the proponent of the argument is to make the intellectual price as high as possible. What do you have to give up in order to deny the conclusion? One skeptic has decided to avoid the conclusion of this argument by attacking the entire system of mode logic, called the S5 system, upon which this argument is based. This is so incredible that at first I thought it was a joke. S5 is well accepted as a fully coherent logical system by logicians, and an accurate representation of certain kinds of modality in the philosophy journals. I mentioned to potential detractors that it is just about impossible to avoid the conclusion of the ontological argument unless you are willing to deny the laws of logic themselves. This guy apparently took me up on the offer. So let's go through a recap of modal logic. Modal logic is a formal logic which adds two additional truth qualifiers. Something can be true, something can be possibly true, and something can be necessarily true. The diamond denotes possibility, and the box denotes necessity. Modal logics use a semantic called possible worlds. A possible world is a description of the way reality might be, kind of like a hypothetical situation. The actual world is a possible world where the entire description is true, the description of the way reality is. There are different systems of modal logic where the axioms are different. There are also different modal logics, where the application is different. The term possible and the term necessary have different meanings in different modal logics. So the first question is, what modal logic are we using for the ontological argument, and which of the systems should we use? Modal logics include deontic logic, which is logic of obligation, temporal logic, a logic of time, epistemic logic, the logic of knowing things, and alethic logic, the logic of truth. Since the argument is an ontological or metaphysical argument, we are going to use alethic logic and deal with metaphysical modalities. Alethic modalities and epistemic modalities are often expressed in English using the same words. It is possible that Bigfoot exists can mean either Bigfoot could exist, whether or not Bigfoot actually does exist, or it could also mean, for all I know, Bigfoot exists, which is epistemic. In alethic mode logic, something necessary is true in all possible worlds. Something possible is true in at least one possible world. To say a statement, we'll call the statement X, is possibly necessary, is to say that in at least one possible world, it is true that X is true in all possible worlds. This is the same as saying that X is true in all possible worlds. And this means that saying possibly necessarily X is equivalent to saying necessarily X. This means that when when we have to pick a system of modal logic, it must account for this. It must be able to derive this formula in order to accurately represent metaphysical possibility and necessity. To think of it another way, when we are dealing with metaphysical possibility and necessity, we are dealing with ultimate possibility and necessity. By ultimate, I mean possibility and necessity that does not vary over different possible worlds. For there has to be at least one truth that holds for absolutely all possible worlds with no exceptions. And if it didn't, then the statement, there is no truth that holds for all possible worlds, worlds would hold for all possible worlds. So we know that there is at least one of these truths that has this ultimate necessity. Hence the proposition necessarily t and the proposition necessarily necessarily t have to mean the same thing. If it didn't, the term necessarily isn't talking about ultimate necessity. Same goes for possibility. If we say that something is metaphysically possible, we are talking about ultimate possibility, and therefore possibly possibly t is equivalent to possibly t. Otherwise, we are not talking about ultimate possibility. And not only is this true, but it must be necessarily true in order for us to be talking about ultimate possibility. If possibly t did not entail necessarily possibly t in all worlds, then we would not be talking about the ultimate possibility. In short, only systems of modal logic that have what is called universal accessibility can represent metaphysical truths. Another way of saying it is that in order for our system to reflect metaphysical truth, it must define necessity and possibility in the following way. Necessarily P holds if and only if, for every world, P is true in that world. Possibly P holds if and only if there is a world where P is true in that world. S5 is the only system that can do this. Now, S5 is not appropriate for all modal logics. It would not represent temporal modal logic, for example. But regarding the ultimate possibility and ultimate necessity needed to address metaphysical statements, 
Only S5 will do. It is the only system that can address ultimate modality. Under S5, you can stack modal operators, that's diamonds and boxes, as much as you want and they will all collapse into the last operator. But it is essential that this does happen if we really are talking about the fundamental laws of metaphysics. To quote Alexander Proust, broad logical possibility cannot have been different, since it is a matter of what propositions follow from what propositions, and what follows from what could not have been different. The collection, C0, of all the fundamental laws of metaphysics could not have been different from what it is. That is central to its being the collection of the fundamental laws of metaphysics, and the could not here surely is metaphysical. Moreover, what C0 allows cannot have been different. If it were different, then that would presumably be because a collection of laws might permit different things in different circumstances. Suppose C is some collection of fundamental laws that permits different things in different circumstances. But then there would need to be another metaphysical law, or metaphysical laws, as to what the laws in C collectively permit under what circumstances. And that, barring a vicious regress of more and more and more basic laws, would then have to be the fundamental laws specifying what laws in C permit. And these laws couldn't be in C, since the laws in C would not permit different things in different circumstances. Therefore, if C permits different things in different circumstances, then C does not contain all the fundamental laws in the way that C0 does. Thus, what C0 permits could not have been different, and hence modality could not have been different. And this is what F5 says. There has to be at least one fundamental truth that does not vary over possible worlds, because if there are none of these truths, then that truth is the fundamental truth that does not vary over possible worlds. The backwards E represents the existential quantifier. Whatever comes after this symbol is said to exist. When the modal operator is placed before the quantifier, we are talking about existence de dicto. So when the diamond is placed before the quantifier, we can say it is possible that an alien exists. When the modal operator is placed after the quantifier, we are talking about existence de re. An example would be a possible alien exists. The dicta modality states that the proposition is necessarily true or possibly true. The re modality states that a certain state of affairs possibly holds or necessarily holds. De re is about the thing itself. Quine objected to de re modality because he believed it could not be expressed without resulting in absurdities. Quine believed in what's called the substitutivity of identity, meaning that given a statement of identity, like x equals y, the two terms, x and y, are interchangeable. Susan Hack cites his objection in her book, The Philosophy of Logics. Quine objects to de re modality with the following argument. 1. Necessarily, 50 is greater than 7. 2. 50 equals the number of states in the U.S. So 3. Conclusion. Necessarily, the number of states in the U.S. is greater than 7. Quine states that 1 and 2 are true, while 3 is false. Yet if 50 is equal to the number of states, then we should be able to substitute one term for the other with no change in the resulting statement's truth value. The problem here, as Saul Kripke pointed out, is that there is a difference between rigid and non-rigid designators. A rigid designator picks out the same thing in all worlds. The square root of 16 picks out the number 4 in all possible worlds. The number of states in the US picks out different values in different possible worlds. When we are doing modal logic, the two equal terms can only be substituted for one another if, if and only if, either one is a rigid designated for the other, or if they are both rigid designators for a third term. Once we recognize this distinction, the problem disappears. This is why Genoveva Marti concludes, Quine's argument does not succeed in proving that modal distinctions collapse. A crucial step in Quine's reasoning relies on the assumption that whenever two expressions determine the same object, those two expressions should be intersubstitutable, exchange for one another, salva veritate, with no change in truth value, even when they occur under the scope of a modal operator. What's even worse for Quine is that even under his own criteria, his argument commits a fallacy of ambiguity. It's like the old joke, I once met a man with a wooden leg named Smith, and I asked him, what's the name of the other leg? It appears that the statement 50 equals the number of states is a statement about a number, while the statement the number of states in the U.S. is greater than 7, is about states. If we interpret the third statement, number 3, so that it is about numbers, then the third statement is equivalent to, necessarily, the number that numbers the states, as things in fact stand, is greater than 7. And this is a true statement, as it is a statement about numbers. If we instead leave the third statement as it is, and reinterpret the second statement so that 50 equals the number of states is about states, 
then the second statement is equivalent to however many states in the US there happen to be, that's what the number 50 is. And clearly this is false. We don't define the number 50 in terms of states. Either way, Quine's objection fails. Furthermore, Quine's most significant blunder in his argument is that he tries to draw metaphysical conclusions out of an argument that only addresses semantics. This is one reason that Quine's argument against de re modality has been almost universally rejected in the philosophy journals, even by philosophers who themselves reject de re modality. For further reading on the subject, Alvin Plantinga has also shot down Quine's objection in chapters 2 and 3 of the nature of necessity. So there is no problem with de re modality. It is fully consistent with the S5 system and does not lead to any sort of modal collapse. Objections surrounding it have been answered half a century ago, which is why Richard Swinburne could say confidently, if a state of affairs is necessary, the proposition which states that the state of affairs will hold will also be necessary, and conversely, if a proposition is necessary, then the state of affairs which it states to be the case is necessary. Necessity de re entails necessity de dicto, and conversely. It's sort of a backhanded compliment that someone would go to such extraordinary lengths to avoid believing in the triune god. It's not every day that someone decides to jettison an entire field of logic just to avoid the conclusion of one argument. I wonder what the new atheists would say if we resorted to such extreme measures to avoid the conclusion of one of their arguments. I'm sure it would not be nice, whatever it is. Shalom Aleichem.